Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to give the classic anamorphic lens cinematic look in Blender. Anamorphic lenses used in cinema present some very specific features, such as a cinemascope panoramic image ratio, vertically stretched bokeh, chromatic aberration on the corners, tinted horizontal flares and noise, just to name a few. In this test scene, there are a number of statues on a rooftop and an HDRI, but the following instructions apply to any scene with the appropriate light setup. We can achieve the look using Eevee, and while this engine is not physically accurate, the final look can be quite convincing, or at least very appealing. In the EV settings, you need to make sure to have ambient occlusion, screen space reflections and motion blur on. I suggest to avoid activating Bloom, as the very shallow depth of field we are going to use will create some form of glare anyway. The cinematic grading can be decided in post-production, and the look is certainly a matter of personal taste. I usually go with a filmic profile and high or very high contrast, adjusting the exposure and curves until I'm happy with the preview. In the output properties, we need to set the final resolution of the frame. In this case, I'm going to use a 2K resolution, which in CinemaScope terms means 2048 by 858 pixels. If you want 4K, you just need to set the percentage to 200%. If you want to know more about cinema industry standard resolutions, I can suggest to take a look at this handy cheat sheet. The final frame is going to have a very panoramic ratio. We need to change the aspect ratio, in this case of the Y, to 2. This will create a different framing that will eventually be disqueezed back to the frame size in post. Heading to the camera, we need to set the focal length to something realistically used in cinema, especially with anamorphic lenses, usually between 35 and 85 mm. Enable depth of field and select the object you want to focus on. If you don't have an object to select, you can use the manual distance, but I truly suggest to at least create an empty and use it as a target of your camera focus. Aperture, you want a small value, to get a good separation of the subjects with background and foreground. Only very high-end lenses have a very round bokeh. Normally you can see in the blurry highlights the number of blades of the shutter. This can be set here. And one common amount is 7. Once the camera is in place, we can render a test image and move to the compositor. Here we can add a viewer node to see in real time our results. Firstly, we need to disqueeze the image ratio to bring it to the normal aspect. And we can do this with the scale node. This will give us the classic vertically stretched bokeh. Going forward, we add the lens distortion node to recreate the dispersion and lack of clarity on the sides of the image. We can enable Jitter if you want to add some grain to your frame. And the final part are the very peculiar streaks of lights in the highlights. To do so, we can add the glare node, changing the mode to streaks and the number of them to 2. Then we can play with the other settings until we reach a result we like within our scene. Given the fact that these streaks are often tinted, depending on the coating and thickness of the lens, we need to separate them from the frame. And with the Mix RGB node set to color, we can decide what tint they will be. At this point, we need to make a diversion from the original lens and create some layering between our tinted streaks and the original image using another Mix RGB node set to Add. And this is it. The speed of EV comes with a specific downside in this technique. The bokeh given by the depth of field is an effect and not calculated physically. This means that the blobs are creating a lot of glare. While it could be pleasant in some situations, if you want a more accurate result, you need to jump to cycles. In this case, the entire workflow will be exactly the same, apart from the bokeh shape. 
you would want to change the depth of field ratio geometry to 2, so that they will follow the image aspect ratio. A final note about what does make your video cinematic, camera movements are paramount. They need to be smooth, even though it's a matter of taste and rules are meant to be broken. As usual, I hope this video can help you or at least can inspire you to create something amazing in Blender. See you later. Ciao.